Hey guys, it's your best boxing friends. I'm Kelsey. This is Rachel. Rachel, I feel like all day I've been writing about heavyweight prospect F.A. Agagpa. No, no. F.A. Ajagpa. That's what it is. <laughs> I can spell it, but I can't say it. He's a Nigerian who moved over to the United States. He competed in the 2016 Olympics. Anyway, so I feel like, almost like I'm there's not a lot out there about him, right? We've seen him a little bit on PBC. There's not a whole lot that's been written about him. So I feel like I'm a prophet, if you will. Like, I'm Isaiah, and I'm, like, writing about... So I'm really, like, it's really... I'm going to leave a, sh a link in the show notes. It might be... I might be going a little too Herman Melville on it. You know what I'm saying? When you read Herman Melville, you're like, what are you referencing, guy? But I'm so excited. I feel, I, I feel like I had to come and be like, look, guys, I know we're all interested in Tyson Fury and uh, Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua, but this guy, we might as well just start thinking about this guy because he's going to come up and annihilate everyone. That's how I feel right now. That's my feeling. And so I wanted to just express that. Cause and so I, you talked to Ronnie, and Ronnie yeah, made a bold statement. He said it like more on one occasion. He said, I'm telling you, in two years, this guy's going to be the heavyweight champion of the world. And this guy's 8-0 <laughs> with seven kills. And Ronnie Shields, I've known Ronnie Shields for probably like 10 years now, and he doesn't say these type of things. Just Some fighters will talk every single fighter they have. Well, a lot of times the case is that this is their only fighter or whatever. But Ronnie Shields has been around for a long time. He's trained great heavyweight champions like Evander Holyfield and Mike Tyson. And he has multiple world champions in his gym at all times. And he's never really come out and just been like, hey, man, this is the guy. And so that says something to me. That says that it's legitimate. And moreover, I remember two years ago, we were over at Flex. And that's where Ronnie has his fighters. It's a, a athletic facility owned by Danny Arnold. We talked, we talked a little bit about it before. But I remember Danny coming over to me and being like, hey, come here, I want to show you something. And, like, he just looked all crazy, like, he, you know, like, he knew, like, a secret or something. And he's not ever like this, you know? And he's like, that guy right there, that's the one. <laughs> and, like, I look over there, and, like, this is a six-foot-five specimen Adonis of humanity standing <laughs> over there. And I'm like, okay, like, yeah. And, and I'm, I'm not the type that buys into promotional hyperbole, right? Like, and even, like, I'm a little distrustful of humans in general. So when I hear stuff like that, I'm like, okay, man, yeah, whatever. And I remembered it, but I never really, you know, I didn't, it's not like I was like, oh, I went home and like wrote about this guy being great. Because if you're in the media or just a boxing fan, you have to kind of be on your toes with what's uh, promotional and what's legitimate. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't have doubted these guys because they've never really been like, hey, promote, we're promoting, you know, we're going to say stuff that's not true. They're not like that. Mm -hmm. But still, I just trust general humanity. So I didn't trust it. Then, like, years later, I had not really put that out of my mind. We see a fighter who is going to be in a, a heavyweight bout, and the only time in boxing history that I'm aware of, that the guy gets in the ring, looks at the other guy, and just leaves the ring. <laughs> That's when he fought Curtis Stevens. We have a video here that called Curtis Stevens, and I think the it's a parody of Lee Wiley's great work. If you don't follow oh, Lee Wiley, yeah. but I'll, I'll leave a link here or put it, it'll be a little box here, but... Listen, I just want to talk about this guy, Rachel. I'm so excited about him. And here's why. Here's what I see. And you can tell me. You've, have you seen him fight? Have I showed no, you clips of him? No. So I've only seen that one. Okay, you saw the... The link where the guy... or when he Well, you've seen where, him, right? The he's, guy left the room. he's six foot five. Um, he's like all muscle. You, I've seen him fight. He's got speed. He hits people and they fall down. Don't get back up. Um, he... And that's, uh, we've seen athletic guys like that before. But yeah, so what you'd have to have, like, we, we've had athletes who come over from other sports to boxing. Yeah. And that's a common thing. And right. for me, usually when I see that, that's my cue that, like, oh, this guy isn't going to do very well. Because boxing is one of those things that you need to be all in on. It's not just like, hmm, I'd like to do this. This might be kind of fun. Well, no, like you might, you might die. You're going to be seriously hurt. It's like the hardest work ever. And guess what? You're going to do most of it all alone because it's just you in that ring. So even when, you know, all the camp, there'll be people around, but essentially it's just you. You're the one that has to do all the training, all the hard work. It's just really, really hard to be 
the best that you can at boxing. Yeah. So usually when somebody comes over from another sport, it's because they couldn't cut it in that sport. And I'm not sure they can cut it in this sport. Now, it seems to me, based on me and yeah. what you've said, is that people seeing this guy know this is what he was supposed to do. Yeah, and, he, and it's not like, when you say coming from another sport, what I, what I, the story I make up is when I see a fighter, um, I forget his name, but there's been guys that have been in the NFL and then have come to boxing. This guy was never like another sport. Sport. He he was a soccer player as a, like a young person, mm -hmm. and then started boxing. So didn't start boxing when he was six, but it wasn't like he started trying to box when he was twenty five. Yeah. But the athleticism that you see in those type of athletes mm -hmm. that come over, because you think like, oh, he's so athletic. He can well, that no boxing is mostly skill. So where we see, so it's rare to have both is what I'm getting at. And um, FA has both of those things when he throws punches. He's already, like, if you compare him to Deontay Wilder, he looks like Sugar Ray Robinson. His punches are straight, they're fast, they come in at the right angles. And, again, he started boxing pretty late in his life, and he's only 8-0. and oh, Like, he's 24 years old, so he's still learning, right? Deontay is, what, 33 or turning 34 soon. Mm -hmm. um, it's a huge difference. And he's as good an athlete, perhaps, as Deontay Wilder. Danny Arnold compared him to Jadavian Clowney, the defensive end for the Houston Texans. If you go look at his 2014 NFL Combine results, he's a super freak athlete of the highest order. It said that they compare favorably. They're kind of around. They have different skill sets, right? But that that's the similar type level of athleticism. And here's the third, the biggest part. Um, and Rachel and I have talked about this a lot. Um, Vladimir Klitschko and Vitaly Klitschko, right? Mm -hmm. Both of them compared to the normal bloke, great athletes. But Vladimir Klitschko was a better athlete. Windsurfer had the body. Looked like a million dollars throwing his punches. Looked fast. One of the best heavyweight champions ever. Not ever going to take that away from Vladimir Klitschko. But the better fighter was Vitaly Klitschko. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is that Vitaly just knew how to carry himself as a fighter with whatever skill and speed or whatever he had. He was just a fighter. It's just something you see when, when the punches well, see, come in. Yeah, like it was innate in him where Vladimir learned everything that he needed to do in the ring. Yeah, he had and to be taught. Was, <laughs> right. Yeah, so like it whatever, yeah, there was something extra, like Vitaly learned all kinds of stuff too, but there was something innate in him yeah. that he was just, yeah. And so what I see when I see F.A. is, and I'm saying this first thing because I don't know what you're saying, is that this guy has all three of those things. He's an incredible athlete. He has the skill already that he looks like a really great professional, and he's in his core fighter in that and again it's it's kind of hard to pin down what a fighter is but what i'm saying is is when a, a fighter just knows how to fight no matter how it looks he knows how to fight and he's got that he knows how to react when punches come in right he, he knows um when to punch back vladimir like you said had to kind of be taught that he, his career really didn't take off until he's under the tutelage of manuel stewart and that's when he they taught him exactly what to do, and he had to stick to that to be great. Mm -hmm. But I'm really excited about F.A. Ajakpa. Oh, that's his name. He, they call him the one and only. That's his nickname. The one and only. You know? And, like, I think he really might be the one and only. So I want you to know about it. I want you out there to go and, like, prove me wrong. Go and watch him fight. Because also, there's also a U.K. heavyweight, Daniel Dubois. Who's, God, he looks like a good prospect, too. When I looked at Dubois, I was like, this guy don't look as good as Epe. And I'm not just, like, it's not because he lives over here. Like, that's just how it looks to me. Mm -hmm. Prove him all. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you disagree with our sets and the Klitschko's, you're just wrong. So <laughs> you don't have to leave that if you don't want it. But if you do want it, you can like, comment, and subscribe. Those are the three. So the three things that a heavyweight, pro a heavyweight need to be great are the three things we talked about. The three things that you need to be great in your life are to like, comment, and subscribe to Real Talk. Thank you.